If your heat siphon is not starting, here are a few things to check. Check to see if the breaker is tripped. Make sure the breaker is the correct amperage and then reset the breaker by turning it all the way to the off position and then back on. Check the thermostat. Make sure the knob is turned clockwise all the way up or if it's digital that the set point is higher than the pool temperature. The heat siphon has a built-in 5 minute time delay and the heater could be in the middle of that delay. Allow up to 5 minutes for the timer to expire. If you have a digital model, you'll be able to watch the countdown on the screen. The outside air temperature should be above 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius before you can expect the heat siphon to start. The heat siphon is equipped with a water pressure switch that should be adjusted by the installer to match your pool system. If this is a new heat siphon, check to make sure that the water pressure switch has been adjusted. Low water pressure or low water flow can cause the heat siphon to turn off. Clean the pool skimmer basket and the pump inlet basket. Pull the pump inlet basket out of the pump and check for debris in the pump's impeller. Clean your pool filter. Depending on the type of filter you have, you can clean or temporarily remove the cartridge or give your earth filter a bump down or backwash. The goal here is to bring your water system up to peak performance to determine if water flow or pressure is the cause of your heat siphon not starting. If you removed any jets or directional eyelets from the pool returns, make sure to reinstall them. They often provide needed back pressure to the system. If the heat siphon won't start, that's an indication that the contactor is not pulling down. Otherwise you would have some symptom of running in some shape, way, or form. Not starting typically means that it has to do with the 24 volt circuit or the 240 volt coming in. So the first thing you do when you come to the heat siphon is to check to make sure there's 240 volts right here. If you do have 24, 240 volts right here, then you have to check to make sure that the transformer is putting out 24 volts. You can do that by disconnecting the one wire from the, the thermostat and measure these two wires to make sure they have 24 volts AC. If they do, then the next thing you'll do is go down the line. Try to find the place where you don't get 24 volts. To here, to here, to here, to here, and to here. As you go down the line, you'll discover which point the 24 volt stops, and that tells you which switch you're at. If you don't have 24 volts here, this is from the thermostat, that means that the thermostat isn't passing along the 24 volts, and that can be for a number of different reasons. Um, the actual mechanical body may uh, have failed. Check to make sure that you can go all the way down and all the way up smoothly and that you hear the clicking noise. Check the, um, the temperature bulb. This, is, this bulb is down inside the heat exchanger the one where the water, water side heat exchanger is. And you want to make sure that the bulb is seated inside and also that this capillary line isn't kinked or pinched anywhere. The next one is the water pressure switch. If you have power here, which is from the thermostat, but don't have power here, then this switch hasn't taken the 24 volts in and passed it along. Something is telling it not to turn on. The most common thing is to have your water pump actually turned off. Check to make sure the pump's turned on, or to check to make sure that the pump has enough um, pressure going through it. If you watch the, if you watch the center, if you watch the center of the switch, that's what happens when you turn your pump on and off. On, 
off. So if, if the piston in the center isn't up, you have a water pressure issue. And you're going to want to check this tubing to make sure it's clear. And then ultimately check your filter or your pump to make sure there's, there's probably some reason why the water's not flowing properly. If you have 24 volts here and here, but not here where the blue wire goes into the time delay, then the low pressure, the refrigerant low pressure switch isn't passing along the 24 volts. The two things here are either the switch itself has failed and isn't operating properly, or there's not enough refrigerant pressure to activate the low switch you'll check the refrigerant pressure with the gauges. If you have 24 volts here, but not here, then the time delay isn't passing it along, and you're gonna wanna either wait for the five minute delay to time itself out and pass the 24 volts along to the next switch, or if it's failing, uh, then just replace the switch, or for the sake of testing, you can jump right out with a um, alligator clips to jump the two, these two together and cancel that out. If you have 24 volts here, but not here, then the refrigerant high pressure switch isn't passing it along. And like the low pressure switch, in this case, there might there is too much refrigerant pressure and it's going past the limit of the switch, so the switch is shutting off. High pressure is typically low, uh, extremely low water flow. There's enough water pressure to activate the pressure switch, but not enough flow to cool off the refrigerant and the refrigerant's uh, going off on high pressure. Okay, check here for 240 volts. And if once you get that, then you're gonna check for 24. This is the 124 volt wire from the transformer. You can see it go down inside there. So you're going to keep your one lead touching this terminal the whole time. You're going to use your other lead to check and follow the chain to find out where 24 volt stops. Keep one probe right here on the wire from the transformer and check the other wire from the transformer. You should have 24 volts there. If you don't have 24 volts that means the transformer is malfunctioning. Just verify that the two wires for the transformer are up here getting 240 volts. And if they're connected, these two yellow wires should be giving out 24 volts. If they're not, replace the transformer. Reconnect the yellow wire and now you should have 24 volts going down into the red wire and then coming back up out of the black wire out of the, out of the uh, thermostat. That black wire connects right here to the water pressure switch, and we're going to check right there. If there's not 24 volts there, make sure the knob's turned all the way up. You'll hear a click, and any point above that click, you should be able to measure 24 volts. If you have 24 volts here, you'll check here next. That means the water pressure switch is passing along the 24 volts from the thermostat, to the low pressure switch, the refrigerant low pressure switch. If you don't have 24 volts here, then you're going to want to check that, that cylinder in the middle to see if it's moving up or down. This is the water pressure switch and you would want to check the water pump, the filter, and the plumbing system to make sure you have a proper water flow to activate that switch. Also check the, the uh, tubing that runs from the water pressure switch to the heat exchanger to make sure that it's not kinked or broken or removed from the heat exchanger. If you have 24 volts here then, that means this is good, the transformer is good, the thermostat's good, the water pressure switch is good, and then we're going to go down the blue and check the other blue wire. You should, if you have 24 volts here, you should also have it here. If not, these blue wires you see connect to the, water, the low pressure refrigerant switch. 
and you're going to want to check to make sure that there's enough refrigerant in there to activate the switch. And if there is, then the switch itself is bad. If not, then you need to check the refrigerant system to find out why there's no refrigerant pressure. All right, so you have 24 volts here, but you don't have 24 volts here. That means that the time delay has been activated and it's in the process of counting down five minutes. If this, doesn't, if this switch doesn't close and put the 24 volts up, pass it on to here within the five, after five minutes, then replace the time delay. If you have 24 volts here, and this black wire is part of the high pressure switch, but not here, that means that there's 24 volts going into the high pressure switch, but not coming out. Just like the low pressure switch, you're going to want to check the refrigerant pressure to find out why it's too high in activating the switch. Okay. If you have 24 volts from here to here, but the contactor isn't pulling down and turning the heater on, then the, co the contactor's coil, which is down at the base, might actually be bad. Replace the contactor.